Okay, if you're making a free-to-play game, then probably one of the biggest challenges will be integrating different ad networks to provide ads inside of your game. Now, there is many different ad providers, but when it comes to ad mediators, there is a pretty short list of ones that I think indies have grown to love. And two that certainly come to mind are going to be Iron Source and Fiber. For the games that I've made, I've stayed within the Fiber ecosystem. And I have a script with uh, me today that I'd love to show you and hopefully it can help you out when you're integrating Fiber into your game. So Fiber comes with all the scripts you, you would need for the API, but when it, calls, when it comes to actually calling into those scripts, you do need a sort of intermediary script that uh, your other classes can call into. And so that's exactly what I've created here. It's a mono behavior called Ad Manager, NS Ad Manager. And I'd love to walk you through this script and hopefully it can help you out in uh, creating ads for your game. So uh, let's begin. Uh, so I have a little debug game object here, which is called debug add. Let me see if I can show that to you. So this is just a little, uh, basically it's just a little picture that says this is a debug ad. And so at various times during the, uh, during the development process, we might be testing the game on the computer, for example, right, in the editor. And so you don't want the game to crash. You do, I think, want to emulate that. And so I have a little debug ad pop up for five seconds or something like that to sort of simulate that. The other thing is we have a bool here called ads enabled. In our game, we decided that if you made a purchase in the game, we would no longer have pop-up ads, no more interstitial ads. And so we'll see that Boolean being referenced later on. The other thing is, uh, this is an ad callback. So this is a, a delegate, right? This is a, an action that can be called later. And the way that this works is you need to specify, hey, uh, if the ad goes well or if it goes wrong, we're gonna need to do different things but that is gonna be separated. It's gonna take some time before that happens. And so this callback is used uh, for that purpose where basically we set the callback, then we have the video play or whatever. And if the user skip through the video or if they watch the whole thing, we might give them the reward or not give them the reward. So that's the role of that. And then I have an enum here just to separate our different ad types, which are gonna be in this case, interstitial and rewarded video. The other, uh, so then there's some uh, information which you have to enter in for your app IDs. So this can be found on your console. You're of course going to want to change this, otherwise your game will be making money for, for us. Uh, but you'll just pop these in from your Android console. Okay, cool. So the next thing, we just have a little static method which can check if it's Android, <laughs> which it does funny enough by checking if it's not iOS. Um, which is not very safe, right? Because then you'll also need this method, which will check if it's mobile, which has a, it's gonna check if it's the editor or if it's standalone um, Windows or PC and all this stuff. Uh, then we have a load here. So this is gonna assert that our debug ad is not null. It will disable the debug ad by default. If we're on mobile, then we're gonna call into the fiber uh, SDK and initialize it based on if it's Android or iOS, we're gonna give it the proper app ID. Otherwise, we're not going to set ads up because we are not on mobile. And all of those API calls will fail if you try to run them in the editor. La -da -da -da. Then we'll check if ads are disabled. Maybe they've purchased something in the past prior to the session. And based on that, we will determine if ads enabled should be set to false. And then we will prep our ads. So let's jump into that script now, or this uh, method rather. So in prepping our ads, again, don't want to do that if we're not on mobile, but we will create an ad fetch if needed, which is basically going to pull a uh, fiber and it's going to create the interstitial if there is not already one available and create a rewarded video if there's not already one available. I find that it's always useful to check if one is currently available before you fetch the new one. I think in the past I have just fetched it automatically and I, I think that may actually fetch it regardless of if you already have one, so you don't want to waste time there. So that is the ad fetch if needed. And then we're actually going to be setting up some listeners here. So we have a rewarded listener, which is going to call our callback when the rewarded ad is completed. And it is also going to call this callback after the interstitial ad is completed. So what that is saying is basically after you play a rewarded ad, call this method, which is down here. This method takes one Boolean, which will tell us whether or not the ad was successfully completed, which will inform us whether or not we should give them a gift if it's a rewarded video ad. Uh, 
or or actually, excuse me, they can specify what the add callback will be. That is our local variable that you saw before. And so basically based on if the add is completed, we will call that uh, that local callback with that information. So if we just actually find references to that, we could see what's going on. Let's see what we're doing here. Okay, so it's somewhere else in the code, they may have been calling set callback, and they are informing us what should happen. So this, this code is sort of agnostic of that, of whether or not we want to display some visual of giving them a prize or something like that. The public method is going to ask for you to specify the callback, and we will return to you whether or not the ad was successful. So it seems like if the player was supposed to earn gems or something like that, it's not happening in this code. This code is sort of agnostic of that, and then whoever the caller is, um, we'll have that information. So I'm wondering if I have that available here. I see, okay. So in the case of no stranger, you can skip the MPC wait time, so he'll immediately respond to your message. And in that case, the call looks something like this, where you're gonna set the callback to go to the unrewarded video watched, which will of course skip the time if it was a success. Otherwise, it will print ad failed. And then right after you called set callback, you're going to play the ad if it's enabled. Okay, so that's how that works, and let's jump back into the code. And uh, there's some other methods here which we could probably check into. These look pretty simple. They're just setting ads or disabling ads. We're using player prefs to remember whether or not ads should be enabled. Keep in mind that is something that could definitely be hacked if they wanted to. It's not a it's not a safe place to save stuff. So this will check if an interstitial is available. Again, it is, I see, okay. So there, there's some interesting stuff here where we are going to have to change the ID based on if it's Android or iOS, which seem to be these sort of constants I've defined. You could also just have a local variable, which is your app ID for the session, which you could uh, define once. You wouldn't need all these uh, if statements. But I made this code before I probably knew how to do that. What else is going on here? So we've got the ad fetch, we talked about that. Okay, so let's jump into the meet which is play add if enabled. So how does that work? First, we will do an add fetch if needed so that we're never trying to play the ad if we haven't already fetched it. And then if it's not a rewarded video, we are going to do the callback automatically. If it is a rewarded video or we have ads enabled, then we're gonna jump into this if statement now, it's an error if we try to do a rewarded video but without requesting a callback because they won't be able to get a reward, so that's a good time to spawn an error. If it's not on mobile, then we're gonna show the debug ad and then we're going to give them the callback as if they had completed it. So that's for testing in the editor. And then if we are on mobile and we fall into this section, in which case if it's a rewarded ad and the rewarded ad is available, we'll play the rewarded ad. If it's interstitial and interstitial is available, we'll play the interstitial ad. And if it's neither of those types, then we're gonna have an error because it's not a type we recognize. Let's jump down here to playing those ads. This code uh, looks very similar, it could probably be simplified. Um, but the paradigm that I, I have here is if the rewarded ad is available, we're going to play it, making sure to catch any exceptions that might occur. Don't want the game to crash if the ads break. If the incentivized ad is not available, again, incentivized is synonymous with rewarded in this case, we're actually going to retry. So what I've decided to do here is do an ad fetch if you can, and then try to play the ad again. And I try that three times, and then if I can't get it to work on the third time, or maybe uh, on the second time, I'm gonna give up and I just return false. So that's what that looks like. Okay, and so then we also have interstitial, where it's a similar similar thing going on here. Then we have the play add debug, which is just gonna set the game object to true, and then 1.2 seconds later, it's gonna turn it off. So just to simulate what an ad might look like. Of course, that's a lot shorter than probably the ads that'll actually be there. And then you can disable the debug ad, which, uh, may be useful somewhere else in the code base, I'm not sure. Oh, of course, this is um, this is calling this. Okay, so 
1.2 seconds later, it will call this method to turn the ad off. So that's how that works. So just to walk you through the whole flow once more, during the load, we will connect to Fiber, initializing with our app ID. We will then go into the method, uh, let's close this all for a moment. Okay, so we do the load. Then we're going to do prep ads, which is going to say whenever you play a rewarded ad, call the callback after ad method. Then um, the client, uh, wherever this call code is being called, it will call set callback. So it will set up what our ad callback should be. So give the player a reward if they watch an ad. And then the client will choose to play an ad if enabled. In which case, it will go all the way through that branch and it will call play rewarded ad video mobile, which will then go into this method. It will go to fiber.rewarded.show. So it will show the ad. And this is all part of their uh, SDK secret stuff. But after it shows the ad, because we did this line of code and this line of code, it will, after the ad, go to this method, telling us whether or not the ad completed successfully. We're going to take that Boolean and return it to whatever the action is that the user specified, which in this case, as I think we saw, was over here where it will determine whether or not it should skip the conversation. So that is the script, ms underscore ad manager. I'll include it in the description below, and I hope it helps you in integrating fiber ads. Good luck.